Hello and welcome to this uh, video tutorial. My name is David Thorne. Um, today we're going to be talking about um, accessing your MySQL server remotely. Um, now basically uh, in the previous tutorials I've installed MySQL server, added and granted users and stuff like that. Um, but for the, for the sake of this tutorial I wanted to go through everything from the beginning. Um, so anyone else watching it knows the exact steps that we want to do and is, isn't going to get confused by the stuff that we've done already. Okay so let's get started. Now the beginning bit of um, installing MySQL I'm just going to run through really quickly. I'm going to leave a little link up right now. <coughs> to, to so you can go and see the slow version okay but this is just going to fly through it and get to a stage of actually adding users um, and then changing the configuration so without further ado let's go on so we need to be root first of all and then say yum um, install mysql and mysql server that's just going to fly through and find the packages that we need to download I'm going to say yes to download them it's going to go off download the four packages and install them Okay, it's running the checks now. Installing. Installing. Verifying and complete. Okay, let's just clear, clear the screen by pressing Control L. Um, now that it's installed, let's just set it so that um, the MySQL D is going to run on server startup. Okay, and if it crashes, then the MySQL server will start up on the event that it has crashed. Okay, next thing we want to do is actually start um, the MySQL service itself or the daemon. Okay, so it's initializing everything. It's giving us all the, the instructions of what we've got to do, setting the root password. Okay, that's the next thing that we're going to do. So we're going to say user bin MySQL secure whoops, installation. Okay, we haven't got a root password set. I've removed MySQL completely. Okay, so it's not on there, so there's no databases or anything. So we just say yes to set the root password. We're going to set it with password. Okay, I would advise obviously using a strong password. Remove anonymous users. Disallow root login remotely. Yes. Remove test database and access to it. Yes. Okay, reload privileges table now. Yes. Okay, that's that now done. Okay, so now we know that um, MySQL is up and running. It will start on server startup once again. Root can't access this one um, MySQL server remotely, therefore it can only access it on this one, um, this one computer itself. Um, and that's it. Okay, so let's now log into the MySQL server. Just say MySQL-P. Enter our password of password. Let's just press Control L to clear the screen. Now let's just look at the um, host, the um, user table. So select everything from MySQL database and the user table. And as you can see here, we've got two users, both of root um, and different host. Well, the first host of 127.0.0.1 and then the other of local host. So the 127 one is then the loopback address. And then the second one is local host. So it means that we can access it from this one computer via the local host and then any other processes can then access it through then the, the loopback address and so on. Okay, that's all good. So now what I want to do is add a user for myself, David. Okay, so he's got the exact same privileges as um, the root because I don't potentially want to log in as root with it. Okay, so what I'm going to say first of all is create user and say David at first of all 127.0.1. Okay, and then identified uh, by then password once again. Okay, and then we're going to do another one of then local host. So I want to be able to mirror um, what the root has got basically. Okay, we're not going to delete the root, we're just going to leave the root way, the way it is, but we're going to have my user to be in full control of it. Okay, so now that um, we've got this, we actually need to grant privileges to David. Okay, so we're going to say grant all to give me every single privilege that there is. We'll say privileges after this, and then we'll say on, and we'll say every single database Okay, and every single table, every single database. Then we say two. So which user are we giving this to? And we're giving this to David at, and then local host. We need to do this twice. And then we're going to say with op with grant option. Okay, so it means that I've got um, the ability to grant uh, users to other people. Let's say enter. Now we need to just add one for the 127.0.0.1. And let's place that in there. Okay. That's basically it done. So let's now say flush uh, privileges to make sure everything's uh, loaded again. 
okay and we're going to say um, flush host as well just to know that um, both things whoops both things have been flushed let's just press control L to clear the screen and now we can say select uh, host user from MySQL uh, user and as you can see now we've got a, a duplicate um, user of root but with the name David this time and actually the same password but you want to obviously have different passwords and strong passwords um, but for the sake of clarity in here we're just using the password of textual form password okay so now that we've done this um, let's log out as root shall we and let's just say quit and let's log back in as David okay so let's say user David and then password let's go back in just press control L to clear and let's say um, select user first of all Okay, and as you can see that it's David at localhost is um, logged in now for the sake of purposes let's um, let's quit out this again okay control L to clear and let's now uh, log in this time using user David but host of 127.0.1 and then the switch P for the password and just control L to clear the screen and then select user once again and we're still in as the local host because the IP address has been resolved um, to this it's not such a thing to really to worry about okay and so now that we've done this we want to know that we can access it um, rem remotely um, okay now for the sake of purposes of this we're going to put a user on here of James as well and we're going to make a database for James um, just to show the difference of what a person can access okay so let's just say I'm going to stop doing this capital letters because it's annoying. Um, create user, and we're going to call James at um, localhost. Okay, actually no, it's James is going to be on on the other machine. Okay, yeah, it's going to be on um, the other machine, which I'm going to show you in a minute, which is which is sorry, which we want, which is 10.10.10.10. Okay, so we want allow access on 10.10.10.10. Um, all right um, we're going to use the IP address and then identified uh, by I said I'm going to stop using it um, password okay so that's now done and now let's make a database for James okay so let's say create <coughs> create database and let's just prefix it with a DB and say James um, I just say James James would do okay so we've got the database to create it create database is sorry create database db underscore james now that's created now let's create privileges for james just on this one database on every single table that they make on this one database so let's say a like grants okay and we'll say all to it and on this time we won't say star we'll just say db James dot star so on this database on every single table and we're given all privileges to it so potentially you can do everything you want to this one database okay and I'm going to say um, to then James at 10.10.10.10 so this one host okay this one computer can access this one database okay um, but we're not going to give him the grant option all right so let's just reload that now let's just say um, flush privileges and let's just flick through see if we can find it there it is, and flush host as well that's now done okay so now we can just say um, show databases first of all okay and as you can see we've got um, DB James now let's just see who's uh, logged in first of all here select user it's me logged in so now let's log out as David just to show you that um, what happens when we try to log in as James so let's just say user James with password type in password access denied because it's not on localhost okay so it's now just uh, log back in as David everything's fine control L to clear the screen okay so now we've got James can't even log in on this one machine which is what we want as well because he, we want him to be able to log in on the other machine now in order for us to be able to log in on the other machine we have to edit something um, have to edit something on the actual Linux server rather than the MySQL um, machine itself so let's just say quit on here 
Okay, Control L to clear the screen. And now what we need to do is we need to edit the my conf, let's call it conf file rather than comp file, the my.cnf file. And when inside of here, okay, what there is, you have to be rooter obviously to access this. And just basically with inside of this MySQL D bracket area, so beneath it, um, we need to say bind address. Okay, now the address that we're going to bind to um, by default is 0, .0, 0.0.0.0. Okay, so it means that every single IP address um, can access it. Actually, no, I believe it changed, so it's only locally that it can access it to. We could add 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0, then everyone can access it. Um, but we're going to put in the IP address of this one machine, which is then bind dash address equal this machine. Okay, this as as you can see down here, I wrote the IP address of this machine, so I didn't forget which machine I'm using. Um, okay, so that's basically that bit there. So we just press um, Escape colon WQ to quit and to exit. Now, after these making these changes, we actually need to restart. Um, the MySQL service. So let's just say service MySQL D restart. That's potentially the most you need to do. Now, if you've only got those settings with inside of your my.cnf file, um, then everything's going to be fine. Now, if you've got a huge amount of list of other things, you're going to have to research um, some other items within it because they might stop um, you from being able to do this. Um, but potentially on CentOS, when you install MySQL Server, that's the default um, my.cnf file that you're going to get. So now that the MySQL service um, has been restarted, um, we should now be able to access um, this machine as such, this MySQL server on another machine. So for the sake and purposes of this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up another terminal, okay, and I'm going to SSH to my other machine. Okay, and we want uh, David out there. Okay, yeah, it's fine. Okay, so now now I'm on my other machine, um, which is actually where I'm sat as well, because this is a virtual machine which I'm running um, in the background. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to say uh, MySQL um, user um, James. Okay, and and this machine just to show you very quickly obviously is then um, got the IP address of 10.10.10.10 okay so this is one that um, we want to work with alright so let's say MySQL user James P password and we still get access denied for user James at local host okay uh, now there's a reason for this so let's just first of all ping um, dot 30 and we get the the answer back which is no problem now let's just move this down and come back over to here now we've got the MySQL service um, running okay so this one make sure we get this right that one's that one there yeah okay we've got the MySQL service running um, on here at the moment and this is then my other machine okay oh sorry I'm being stupid then that's why it went localhost. So we want um, at 30. Okay, so let's just start this again for clarity. I forgot to do the host thing then. Uh, okay, so we're gonna get. Let's just do this once again. MySQL uh, dash u James is the user that we're going to log in with, and we're going to um, supply the H um, switch and say then the IP address of the machine which we want to um, connect to, and then dash p. So let's now just say password. Okay, cannot connect to MySQL server on this IP address. Okay, this is the next thing that we need to do. Okay, because although we've set up the MySQL server, we've set up the users, we've set up a database for James. If it can't get through the IP, um, the the firewall and the IP tables, um, then we're never going to get the connection. Therefore, it's saying that they can't connect to the MySQL server. So we have to open up port three three zero six on the input and output chain of our IP tables. Okay, of our firewall. So. Let's just press um, Control L to clear, and we need to open up our IP tables file. Now, um, we could just do it from uh, the command line here, okay? But I don't want to. Okay, so let's open this up. Now, this is the default settings of your um, CentOS machine on your firewall uh, when you install it. Now, what we need to do is beneath the port 22, so the SSH um, ele 
element of it just press I to insert then dash A and then input and we want then uh, the protocol of TCP and we want to say the M to match and we're going to match um, sorry we're going to match state okay and the state that we're matching okay is new and established okay and then we're going to match also then TCP and the destination port is going to be 3306 okay and then we're going to say J for the action and the action is going to be accept okay that's pretty much it now we can see that on our output chain uh, the default uh, policy is accept anyway so we don't need to add a rule um, to the output chain okay so we're all okay and we're not running um, any network address translation therefore we don't have to worry about the forward uh, chain either okay so this will do perfectly fine so escape colon wq to quit because we've updated our IP tables we then need to restart um, our IP tables or use the restore function and so on but we'll just say IP tables restarts everything's been fine now to come back over to our other machine now okay which is the one which I've SSH to okay this is at 10.10.10.10 okay we can now run this one again supply a password and as you can see we're now in okay so how did this work this is now the question all right why did I give the IP address in the host table and um, why did I give the IP address of the host rather than of the MySQL server I'm going to explain this in the next tutorial in part two okay so for the time being we've got everything done now in the second tutorial I'm going to slow down and I'm going to explain everything okay so don't worry about it all right just come to the next tutorial and we can slow down and we can talk through what it is exactly we've done in slow time okay so I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial all right bye bye